Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Picasso once remarked that art is a lie that tells the truth. My guest is a magnificent liar whose fictions tell profound truths. Truths about the dignity in the anonymous, about how the ordinary and the extraordinary intertwine, about holding two contradictory ideas at the exact same time, about the past burdening and enriching the present, and about words and storytelling, identity and history. To talk about such things and a truly wonderful book, Transatlantic, is Colin McCann, the internationally acclaimed author of The Let the Great World Spin, which won the 2009 National Book Award for Fiction, six previous books, including the bestsellers Dancer and Zoli, and two short story collections. Colin teaches at Hunter College's MFA Creative Writing Program. Colin, welcome back. It's great to be here. Oh, man, it, it was a wonderful read. I One love the way you play the piano like this. This is, this, this is fantastic. Thank you. You like, <laughs> you, you, you like the staccato. Well, you play staccato. Your sentences are staccato. They, yeah. they come. There's music. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. One of the things that struck me about this book, and then I went back and looked at the other books, is the rhythm of the words. The sentences are music. It's almost like Bob Dylan. You know, the words are almost more important than everything else. If only I could have the hair, I'd be... Yeah, dead. well, I mean, come on, can you play the harmonica? <laughs> no, yeah. Okay, let's start with words. From, hmm. the, from the epigram quote through the entire book, one thing I noticed is the focus on words. You right. use the word words, or word, multiple times. I'd like right. to do a search. It's got to be scores. Right. And then for the rest of the book, you're talking about synonyms, language, right. speech. Frederick Douglass hears the word famine, and it's right. a new word. Lily gets language. What is it about words and language that intrigues and motivates Colin McCann? Well, I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, to me, it's all, it's all about music. It's about rhythm. It's about, uh, you know, being a, a, a strange conductor. And you walk into uh, the pit one day, and then you have all these cellists there, and then you have the violinist over there, and you have the piano here, and you have the drums here, whatever it happens to be, and you don't know really what you have. But you, you listen to them for a little while, and you get them to play, and then you hear a note, and then you follow that note, and then you do it over and over and over again, and until eventually, hopefully, at the end, you have, you have a symphony. And that's the, 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 the desire to get a great symphony going. What, what notes did you start with in this transatlantic? It's, it's, it's a multi-generational, right. several ocean crossings. Give us a little bit of the... The book, the libretto on the symphony. You know, um, I have, a, I have a, a really bad line when people ask me, what's your book about? And I say, it's about 300 pages. <laughs> you know, it's the, uh, right. because it's hard to... I it's know, hard, I know. It's, it's hard to, to, to communicate. Um, you know, I take three major transatlantic crossings. One by Frederick Douglass, the uh, American abolitionist in 1845, when he finds the famine in Ireland unfolding at his mm. feet. I take then the 1919 transatlantic crossing of Alcock and Brown, an incredible story. Unbelievable. Yeah. But that, particularly for those of us who thought it was Lindbergh. I know. It's an it, unbelievable I, story. I, I thought it was Lindbergh too. Go ahead. And they take this, this basic boat of air across the ocean from, from Newfoundland and they ditch in the bog in Galway. But the beauty of them was that they, they came out of the First World War. And, and they had all that dying all around them. And then they do this beautiful moment where they, 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 they bring uh, the, the continents alive. To, they introduced them. Yeah, and, 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 and the line that, that, that you use, that it brought history, you know, brought it to an end, that the world had closed. Right, the world had closed but opened up at the same right. time. You know, it, it's this simultaneous, like, holding these contradictory things uh, that, you, that, that, that you were talking about. And then the third one is, I mean, uh, my favorite moment of the 20th century uh, for Irish history, and perhaps for all history, was um, 
the peace process in Northern Ireland after 800 years brutality, savagery, 30 recent years of just incredible bath of dying. Uh, we finally have Clinton appointing uh, Senator George Mitchell to go over there and to help us negotiate our peace process. And, and, and a man of like still alive and very well and kicking in fact, mm -hmm. um, George, George Mitchell is probably one of our, our great politicians. Let's let, let's just let's just con continue with the flow. That is the only Mitchell is the only character that's that's a lot that's still yeah, alive. That, that's what right. was it like, not for you but for him to be confronted by this alternative life that you created for him? Well, uh, you know, in, in in the novel, so I could take those the, the, those three pieces and then I stitch them together with the stories of women. Wow, and, and we get, we need to talk about that. Yeah, but really, um, when when we talk about about Mitchell, we have to talk about his wife because right. I I, I um, decided I want to write about the peace process and uh, and about Mitchell. So I wrote to him here, here in New York. We live about ten blocks from each other. And I said, I would like to imagine what, what, what your life is like. And she understood entirely that, you know, what I wanted to do. Whether, but Senator Mitchell was a bit wary. He's, like, he's going to create a fiction out of me? Right. You know, I'm Come real. Come on. You know? Right. Uh, I'm real. What's it, you know, look, I, I can pinch myself. Why, why do you need a fiction? And um, she convinced him to, to, to let me have a try. I went away for six months and imagined him. And then uh, she uh, called me up um, after the first draft. And she had a few things to say, but one of my favorite things that she said to me, so I have to talk to you. He never wore brown brogues. He only wore black shoes. <laughs> okay, and yes. I, and it's like that level of detail is fantastic. Sure. Absolutely, and, and that level of access. So I tried to, 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 to um, I don't know, find the pulse of the man. And I really think, or hope, that I found the pulse of the man. And I know that possibly I did because he told me that I was too flattering to him. And I like that response. Right. He said I was too kind to him. Um, well, the diplomat's it's, response. It's the diplomat's response. Wow, gracious, perfect. Yes, it's gracious very. response. Uh huh. But he went across there and he listened to us prattle on, and I mean prattle on over and over and over again. You know the Irish. We can just go on and on and on. That's on, why on. we love you. Come <laughs> on, you're serious. But this whole thing, like you know. For 700 years, Mr. Chairman, they've been bombing us and we've been doing this and then point of order, Mr. Chairman, and um, people just talking and talking. And he sat there and he was quiet. He listened. And then he turned around and said, OK, by Good Friday, I'm going home. I'm going home to my five month old son. He was 64 years old. Right. And you opened the, 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 the vignette of him with him changing a diaper. I know. It's like, that's great. That must, it must have been terrifying for him when he start, started. But that's perfect. Kind of first. Be because that's the thing. Come on. What He's, did Mr. Obama do this morning? He woke up and he brushed his teeth. Right. You know? Right. And he played with his kids, probably. Right. And he played with his kids. Kissed and his got, wife. Yeah, and went off to wife. work. And put things in a school bag. But look, history doesn't put things in the school no. bag. And, and, and fiction can. And that's what I love about it. Those small little anonymous moments go to make up the huge moments uh, in our lives. So the fact that Obama gets up, brushes his teeth, does the school bag, kisses his kids, gets them off to school, actually determines so much of how world history might actually unfold sure. that particular sure. day. Sure. You know? um, and this to me is, is, is sort of fascinating. Speaking of Obama, clearly there are resonances of Obama and Douglas, or Douglas really in Obama. Was that yes. a conscious connection? It was. It became a conscious connection. So um, the amazing story is that at the age of 27, Frederick Douglass, uh, who uh, his owners, he's still a slave, right. uh, have threatened to kidnap him and, and make a spectacle of his fame. Um, he goes across to England, <clears throat> really. Uh, to go on the abolitionist right. um, uh, uh, circuit. To raise money. To raise money. But in preparation for England, as they always do, go try it out in the Irish first. You right. Know, maybe, you know, maybe, right, and, right. And where? It's like New Haven. Go ahead. But, 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 but his consciousness, <clears throat> his whole political theory, his whole uh, relationship to speaking, to thinking, to embracing contradiction, it's all formed in, a, in, in four months in Ireland, where the Victorian ladies adore him. He's a dandy. He's a complete dandy. He, he buys himself fancy clothes. He does, he does all these things. But uh, he, then he gets confronted with the terrible realization that the Irish are poorer than his own people who were enslaved back in the United States. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's that journey from sort of 
you know, west to east right. with him. But it's paralleled, in a sense, by your first female character, Lily Duggan, right. going from Ireland to the United States right. and, and, and to New York, even though she speculates either Boston or New York. Right. There's a lot. Is, is there you in that being an emigre? Is there is there something to be said about the emigre experience? I mean, to me, it was just it was just there. Well, I mean, psychologically, it's interesting for me. You know, I I haven't gone home in a long time. I mean, I return home to Ireland five six times a year. My parents, uh -huh. are there, but I mean, fictionally, I, I mean, in literature, sure. I hadn't gone back. So here I go back in the guise of Douglas, right? And so I'm sort of shaded, right, in in, in, in a way. Uh -huh. And I go, I'm in the 1850s. But right. me personally, I'm in the, I'm in that body. I feel like I'm traveling with him. Then on the stairs, in this house in the 1850s, I meet this housemaid. Right. Lily, and I get a whiff of tobacco oh, from her. Oh, oh, and, and, and then he's, there's a great line. I, I wish right. I could read, but what's the line? I don't know. Which oh, one? man. <laughs> he smells it and he says, the world becomes ordinary, ordinary again. Ordinary again. Yes, ordinary that's again. Right, that's he had right. lived this highfalutin life, and he, this, uh -huh. the smell of this woman with tobacco brought him back to reality. Exactly. It's your words that, in what, that one sentence, bang. And then she collides with him, and, she, and then she, she watches him quietly from the shadows and then she takes great inspiration from it and she goes to America. Uh -huh. What she finds in America is not the American dream necessarily. You know? So dreams become nightmares. Let's, let's stick mm. with Douglas for a second. Sure. And that is his confrontation with the famine and it's part of his journey. There's right. a lot of journeying and because he, he travels from the, you know, the wealthy precincts into the countryside right. and then uh, Lily does the same thing, and then you took a thousand mile or three month bike ride in the United States. What is yeah. it about traveling? What is it uh, about moving? The transients? What is it? Well, I took a bicycle across the United States. Yeah, did about twelve thousand miles actually over a year and a I, half. No, you're crazy. When this, I was like I, right 20, twenty-seven years, I can't believe it was twenty-seven years ago. How can anything be twenty-seven years ago? Oh, but you I also should be my age. Excuse me. Oh, when stop here, young. <laughs> Fifty-seven years ago. Go ahead. But I've also walked across Ireland and 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 walked from. From Kerry, actually, I walked from from Belfast to Kerry, and the whole thing was: what, um, people come up to me saying, "What are you doing walking all that way? Sure, don't you know there's a bus just down the road?" Right. <laughs> like, and trying to communicate to people: "No, you want to be close to the land. Sure, you want to understand your your, your own country." Well, Lily does um, d d does a huge walk yeah. all the way from 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 Dublin to Cork. Then she takes one of the coffin ships that many uh, ancestors who were like and Irish Americans who were out there, they will know that many of their ancestors took these coffin ships across from, you know, Ireland to here and uh, and then created the, 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 this life. And this is the thing of, of, about the two countries. We are word linked, we, you know, we are idea linked, we're mm -hmm. strife linked, mm -hmm. you know, we're poverty linked, we're hunger linked, we're all of these Demographically things. linked. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, you've polluted the entire country. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, but exactly. <laughs> Look, the Irish are everywhere. But but the thing is that, that also we've we've gotten back. So so with uh, you know Douglas going over and with Mitchell going over, this the, the, I think it's important to talk about because sometimes people seem to think that America is so insular and it's only sucked in on, on itself, like it's a big vacuum that doesn't look at the rest of the mm -hmm. world. But the fact of the matter is, like um, you know, in recent history. Uh, Mitchell going across, Clinton going across, all of these people going back to help Ireland. Mm -hmm. And Ireland helped America for sure. Sure. But but there's not as much of a consciousness about th that, 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 that this is a bridge. Mm -hmm. and, and let's have a more nuanced uh, version of, of, of history. And then we might have a more nuanced uh, version of the Irish that we're not all like, you know, uh, you know, swilling on St. Patrick's Day. Right, and, 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 and these are, in a sense, different truths or contrary truths. They may not all be in fact, but they're truthful. They're, they're, right. they're, there's some reality to them. Well, here, here's what I believe. I, be, I believe that the, that, that, that the real can be imagined. In other words, like a new story in the, the front page of the New York Times can be imagined in a certain way because a writer is shaping it in sure. terms of language. Sure. And it's not necessarily everybody's truth. In the same way, imagine the imagined can be real. And I love that idea. Mm -hmm. So that all these people that you meet in a book are as real as the like six or seven billion people you haven't yet met. Right, so right. I mean, 
Frederick Douglass, to me, I had read, you know, I had read his memoir in, in the past, but right now, Frederick Douglass, to me, is what I read in your book. Right. And in a sense, George Mitchell is that person. Right. And certainly, Alcock and Brown are exactly those people. Right. So, yeah, I learned truths, but I, I mean, I, I, in, the, in the book I write, I, I wrote fact, question mark, right. like, right. what am I dealing with? Yeah. So this interweaving of, uh, of fact and fiction, in a sense, brings you a different reality. Yes. Uh, I think it brings you a, a, a more textured reality. The way, the way I, uh, I, I think of it is that, say, um, uh, you know, take any book. Uh, let's take Ulysses. Um, my great-grandfather was alive in Dublin uh, when wow. uh, Ulysses, uh, mm -hmm. the day that Ulysses is set. Now, I only know my great-grandfather because I read that book. Wow. And, 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 you know, and, okay. and so I get a more textured version of the blood that is dripping down through my veins at this very moment because I read a fiction that James Joyce made up out of his imagination. And to me, then the world gets bigger and bigger and bigger because we can use our imaginations. One of the beautiful things that we have, the f what's the freest thing that we have? The freest, well, we have our stories, which are really a great democracy, mm -hmm. but the freest thing that we actually have is our imagination. Sure. And we all want to be somebody else. And that's the beautiful, I wake up in the morning, I roll out of bed, I, I look at myself and I was like, no way, I don't want to spend 24 hours with that. Nice, you know, nice, like, nice. Oh, seriously. Well, well you, can you write me a life? I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll take one, come on. No, but I love going into my little cubby hole, I crawl into Oh, wait a second, like, we, gotta, like, we, gotta, we gotta do your little cubby hole, go ahead. Oh, but I love crawling into my cubby hole and becoming someone else. You know, whether that happens to be uh, Mitchell, whether it happens to be a woman who farms ice, whether that happens to be a woman in Northern Ireland who loses her cottage, it's like those things. And I can be part of that life for a little while. And that, so for, for eight hours a day or six hours a the, the day, I'm not me. And I'm very happy not to be Okay. Me. In what way are you not you? Uh, well, that's a good question because I suppose most of, the, you know, many of these characters that you make up, they become sort of, autobiographical right. in a way. But say, like for example, when I wrote Let the Great World Spin, Go ahead. I was for a long time every day a 38-year-old hooker underneath the deep. So it's both, it's not only imagination, but it's really, I mean, there's this research there. I mean, your ice cutting in the Midwest, right. you didn't make up. I no. mean, you researched that. Oh, I absolutely researched it. So, so, so to be Lily in the 1860s, uh, uh, out there ice cutting, I, I, I want to feel the cold. I want to feel. I want to feel the thrill of being out on the lake. I want to feel the sadness of your husband bringing home a painting, which happens to oh, her man. at one stage. Oh, gives she, me goosebumps! She right. Gets you know. She she gets assaulted by the memory um, of, of her country tr through this thing that she never thought she could own. Right. Which is a beautiful painting, um, and so I like being there. And and I'm not saying it's easy. I can't like just disappear into this cubby hole sure. and 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 and, uh, and have conjure it up. It's, um, but you know, you have to work at it. You have to research it. You have to, you have to imagine it. You have to get the right language for it. And, and sometimes the characters take you along. I mean, does did, in some ways the characters become real? Yes. Do they, did, did they drag Colin McCann to certain places that he might not otherwise have gone? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit wary of that because, like, I don't want to, to, to say, well, it's all mysterious and new. Right. 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 Because, right. because that I'm very much, I, I'm very much You're a realist. You're controlling. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And You're I, the author. I know how dirty and difficult and tormented and bad and evil that the, 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 that this world can be, right? I, and, mm -hmm. and I'm interested in, in writing about that. But that's not enough, because that's just, the, you know, anybody can say that. What I'm interested in saying, there are people who live that way, they're in that, but they vault over, they get right. beyond it. Right. Towards a sort of, right. a, towards a sort of joy, towards a sort of meaning. There's a transcendence there. Yeah, and I, I you know, I'm an optimist, or maybe a pes-optimist, um, which is, you know, uh, you know, ha the sort of person who looks originally and is prepared to take on the pessimist, and then you become an, an optimist uh, further along. And I like these characters, and I want to spend spend some time with wow. them and, and, and push them. But do they drag me different places? Absolutely, they drag me different. Now, places. do some of the some characters eventually not make it onto the the, the, the page? Yeah, there was, there, there, there was a good deal in, in even in in in, in this book. Uh, that didn't make it onto the page. Um, you know, it's it's still brand new for me, and I'm still sort of figuring out. You know, oh, you know, this is the thing. I've, I've I've been going on the road for two weeks. That's about it. You know, and 
talk about that real quick digression. What is it like to be, you know, an internationally acclaimed author with a hot new book? Everybody wants to, what is it like? So where were you in the where were you yesterday, the day before, and the day before that? Yesterday evening I was chasing after a cabbie who almost knocked my son down in the middle of the street. Uh, no, I I'm not your story. Wait, <laughs> wait a second. This is I was uh, on the subway, like uh, come, coming home yesterday. No, but uh, you, look, look, the thing is, uh, it's not like being a film star or uh, or a sports star or anything like that. You just you know you write books and you get a little flare out for 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 a moment and you accept it. But the beautiful thing is that people come along to readings. Yeah. And they read your book, and then they extend your book, like you did. You know, you you've extended my book with all these ideas and and, and comments. Oh well, that's the great thing about really great literature, great cinema, is that it's the reader that gives it the meaning. This is it, and I'm, I truly believe that, that 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 you know what I have to say is so it, it, it's it's not interesting until somebody else owns it. Mm. So I will, you know, paint a picture. And have you walk into it, and 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 the reader is the one who walks out of it, hopefully gracefully, and begins to understand the world in a slightly different way. I don't tell them in what way they should go. I do believe in grace. I do believe in redemption. I mm. do believe in meaning. I believe that our stories matter, and that no matter who we are, we're valuable. That's really wow. important to me. Good. Uh, that I mean, it certainly shows through in in the writing, right. all your writing. There, there, there are universal. Colin McCann themes, even though presented in extraordinarily different ways. Yeah. Do you continue weaving history and fiction, or do you do something else? No. Ne uh, you know what? I'm kind of terrified because you know um, I've d I've done this now a few times, and I, I I think I pushed the idea of history and fiction to a sort of limit with with with, with this particular book. I have an, a vague idea, a rumor that's going on in in, in the back of my head. Yeah, but I'm, uh, you know. Yeah, you don't want to. I wouldn't. I wouldn't no. talk about it. No, don't articulate it because yeah. it may go poof. Yes. Okay. But but but, but, but I'm sort of looking forward to it. I, I mean, I like writing. Okay. And this is the other thing that we should say, and I know you 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 feel this way too. I also like life. I like living mm -hmm. my life out loud. Mm -hmm. I like embracing the world. You said that I, Zola? No, somebody. Zola. He, he said, I, I, want to, I want to live my, my life, life out, out loud. loud. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that idea because you embrace the world, you get into it. And you know, don't get terrified by it, but you also have to, like, like somebody like uh, Mitchell, who was living his life out loud or certainly publicly, you have to have, have embrace humility and silence and recognize mm. that it's other people who do all this stuff for you. It's not necessarily yourself. There can be false things that come along. You know, if you know, say a couple of people come to your reading, you think, "Oh, fantastic! This is good. they're coming because of you." No, they're not come, come because of you. They're coming because of the story right. and how they yep. themselves yep. engage yep. with the story. Yep. Really important stuff. Okay, let's talk about teaching. You are a teacher. You're Hunter a member, College. Hunter College member of the professoriate. Some of your students have gone on and written some really good stuff. I mean, I'm so talk happy. about your teaching a little bit. Well, I love teaching. I really you love teaching. You must be great in the classroom. I don't know if I'm great in the classroom, but I always bring them out for, for, for a drink after. Hey, come that's on. That's well, that's, I mean, come on. <laughs> that's the great. classroom is life. You don't have to drink. The bar, the like, bar yeah, is yeah. part of life. Yeah, or we go down to the cafe, whatever it happens to be. But, um, yeah, recently, just in the past uh, month, uh, Bill Cheng came out with Southern Cross the Dog. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica Sofer came out to, with Tomorrow There Will Be Apricots. Yep. Uh, you know, about 80% of my students end up, um, or uh, well, I work with Peter Carey, so I shouldn't say they're my students. Peter and my students, and uh, also Claire Massoud, we teach together in the MFA program. Mm -hmm. So together, we have hopefully influenced um, or helped influence a whole generation of, of, of young writers to come along. But the thing is, when I first go into the classroom, you like this. Like, so there's, we have about a couple of hundred applications for six places. Mm -hmm. So they're there, they're ready, they come in the first day. And my first lesson is, sorry, lads, I can't teach you a thing. They're all like, what? I put all my, I, I've got to go home and tell my mum and dad I'm not going to be able to, to he doesn't, he's not going to teach me. Well, but what I mean by that. But you didn't that, say you weren't going to, they weren't going to learn anything. Well, that's exactly it. You see, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. And you allow this space. Mm -hmm. You allow them to yep. fail. You allow them to fall. You also allow them to create a community for themselves. And then part of it is that they embrace that. And then they put themselves on the edge. Vonnegut says, and I love this quote, we should be continually jumping off of cliffs and developing our wings on the way down. Oh, good. Isn't One good? of my favorite authors. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. I got to read something. Okay. And, that, and hopefully, you know, that, that you, you, you read something. 
Uh, is this the summons? No, this is. <laughs> This is this is one of the, the the main characters, female characters. There was something she wanted just out of reach, but she was never quite sure what it could possibly be. She had a sense of something more, the turn of a page, the end of a line, the push of a word, a break in the structure of her habits. She envied the young wolf, the command and promise the English woman showed, her profusion of voices, the ability to live in several different bodies. And I think this in better than anything that I've read, describes you. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, very much this chapter is about the act and art of writing, the difficulty of stepping away from yourself, yep. and the, the, the joy of not being yourself, which is, which, which is something. And also, you know, when I write a book, I like to feel that I've gone to, to university again. I liked my university years, so unlike some people. I don't know why people don't like their university. I loved it. Great. Um, but every time I go back into a book, I feel like, um, well, I've got to write towards what I want to know. Because if I wrote about what I knew about, quite frankly, nah. I'd be writing about, nah. like, I live on the Upper East Side, you know, boring, you know? Right, um, I live in the suburbs, more boring. Right, well, there you go. It's like, uh, and so I don't want to write about myself. Right. So I want to write towards the other. And when I do that, then I stumble upon things like, uh, Mitchell, like ice harvesting, you know, like, you know, uh, traveling back and forth, you know, between continents. Sure. There's lots, of, you must have lots of aha moments. Yes, but I've lots of like really bad moments too, where I just walk around the house, like banging my head. I, I don't value writers complaining. I think, I think it is, I, I, I think it's disingenuous. And I think it's all very self-referential to say, oh, how tough it is to write, you know, I have to hide away in a room. Well, no. you, you hide away in the closet. People say you should write about what you know about. I say no. Write about what you want to know. Even better, write about what you don't know, which seems sort of logically, philosophically impossible, but it's not. No, you're yeah. here because I could never be you. I right. could never write this book. Thank yeah. you. And that's, what, that, that, that's why it's absolutely fantastic. And thank you for, uh, you know, l let me, uh, you know, talk away and oh and, come on and blabber I'm, I'm, and blabber. I mean <laughs> if, if if not for your son's graduation we could talk for at least another hour I, I'd love to talk for at least you're coming hour. back I'll, I'll be after back. Your, your book tour I'll be back my thanks to Colin McCann for being on the show his latest book transatlantic is absolutely a must read a must learn a must absorb join me next week when my guest will be New York County District Attorney Cyrus Vance here on CUNY TV. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.